problems, problems all day long. Hey, hey, welcome to Half the Battle. This week, the show is a bit different, as I'm offering some consumer advice, I guess? But it's for second-hand toys, most of which are decades old. Hey, better late than never! Next week, look out for my episode where I tell you why you shouldn't buy a Ford Pinto! G.I. Joe toys are great, I love collecting them, but with some, there can be unexpected pitfalls, even if you buy a complete and mint one. So no, this list isn't about watching out for flaws when buying G.I. Joe toys, like is a figure incomplete or does it have paint damage? This list is about problems that occur with some of them after you've bought a mint and complete one. So here are some toys that have hidden horrors that you'll have to deal with long after buying a toy, sometimes years later. Number 11 and 10, the Tomahawk and Dragonfly Helicopters. The Tomahawk is the best helicopter they ever made for G.I. Joe, followed closely by the Dragonfly. But they share an annoying flaw. And like I said, this isn't about the difficulty of finding a complete one in the case of the Tomahawk, or an unbroken one in the case of the Dragonfly. This list assumes you got a perfect toy fresh out of the box. And the flaw is caused by one thing, an unstoppable force. Namely, gravity. Yes, the full power of this planet's attraction is brought down on these toys relentlessly. Okay, that's a much too dramatic way of saying their helicopter blades tend to start drooping over time. Yeah, due to them being attached without support, they'll start to bend, eager to be reunited with Mother Earth. And the toys won't look as cool on display. I've heard there's a solution to this, putting them in boiling water for 30 seconds and then straightening them. But try that at your own risk. I'm not a medical helicopter doctor, so I can't really give advice. Number 9 and 8. Overkill version 6 and 7. This is a pretty cool figure, and it has a pretty cool gimmick. His arms and head come off. The gimmick is also the toy's downside, as the plastic is pretty soft, so the sockets for the pieces tend to lose their strength a bit, making the limbs too loose. There's not much you can do about this one, just don't attach the limbs and head too much. Or at all. In fact, you should only do it if you have to, because you're making stupid YouTube videos about the toy. But who would do that? Number 7, 6 and 5. Zartan, Xandar and Zarana. Okay, this has been a problem since frickin' 1984, and like with the last entry, the problem is due to the gimmick. All three of these figures change color in the sun. Cool, cool. But for some reason, this made it necessary for Hasbro to sonic weld the front and back halves of their torsos together. Meaning you can't just open them up by removing the screw that's normally the only thing that keeps the figure together. Now, these toys have O-rings that hold the legs, waist and torso together. And even if you get a pristine one with a still perfect O-ring, over time it could snap or loosen because it's under constant tension, or just rot and break. And you can't open the figure to replace the O-ring, unlike with most other G.I. Joe figures. There are two solutions, both of them not great. The first is what most kids or their parents did when these broke back in the day, just gluing the waist piece to the torso and the legs to the waist piece. Hell, I've seen this done on second-hand regular G.I. Joe figures as a result of parents not knowing they could be opened up. The problem with this method is you end up with no thigh or hip articulation. The second solution is more involved as you need specialized tools for it. Namely, a set of circlips or Borg ring pliers. These are sort of reverse pliers in that their points move outward, not inward when squeezed. You use them by sticking the ends in the bottom hole of the torso. Yes, by all means laugh, we're all 12 years old here. And that way you can crack the torso apart. The trouble with this method is that you could easily end up damaging or even destroying the torso pieces. But if it works, you can replace the o-ring and open or close the figure the regular way from then on. Number 4 and 3. Cobra Officer and the Viper Pilot. Never touch these figures! They're awesome, but must be appreciated from afar. Why? Because the Cobra symbols on their torsos. I swear, these things weren't painted on, they were made with disappearing ink. Yeah, these things rub off really, really easily, especially on the Viper Pilot. So, as I've been told many times on dates, you can't go to second base. Yeah, the solution is simple. Never handle the torso, don't even look at it funny, and then the figure should remain mint. 
And finally, numbers 2 and 1, the 2004 Cobra Trooper and Squad Leader. In 2004, Hasbro did a wonderful thing. A full real army builder set called the Cobra Infantry Forces set, containing four Cobra Troopers and two Cobra Officers. Okay, Cobra Squad Leaders, same difference. This set was awesome! Troop builders using original body parts with new head sculpts in colors close to the originals? Yes, please! I love this set, but it's not without its flaws, otherwise it wouldn't be on this list, never mind in the number one spot. It has three problems, a trifecta of troubles, if you will. Let's start with the one that's most easy to fix, the guns they came with. They are these huge rifles that originally came with the Rock Viper. Now, ignoring how aesthetically displeasing they are, the problem is with the figures holding the guns. Their hands just aren't up to it. And I don't mean the thumbs will snap off. No, they are made of a softer plastic, which unfortunately means they'll lose their grip over time and the hand will open too wide permanently. The solution here is really simple. Just give them better smaller guns. There, crisis averted. Nothing to worry about. The other two downsides, though, are more difficult to solve, and they're intertwined. Firstly, either Hasbro used O-rings that are slightly too small or slightly too cheap, since they have a tendency to snap. Seriously, the O-rings on this set of figures break far, far more often than any other figures in the G.I. Joe toy lines from 82 till now. Of course, this shouldn't be a major issue, since you can just replace the rings. And yes, ordinarily you should be able to, if it were not for the third, very much hidden flaw these figures have. I'm gonna tell you right now, but you're not gonna believe me. Hasbro glued the halves of the torso together. I wish I could see the look on your faces right now. Yeah, these torsos are glued shut in addition to having them screwed together. And I have no idea why they felt the need to do this. The figures hold together just fine without glue. It baffles me that Hasbro, the freaking Grand Admirals of doing things as cheap as possible, went the extra and unnecessary mile here of wasting glue on these things. So, of course, you're screwed when the O-rings break. And they will break, as discussed before. So now, just like with Sartan, you have no choice but to break out the specialized tools again and use those pliers from Bizarro World to crack open the torso, risking damage. It makes this incredible set of toys an exercise in frustration to keep in good condition, and that's why they are number one on the list. If you know of any other cool toys with hidden dangers that don't become apparent until after you've bought them, let me know in the comment section below. Well, I'll see you next time everybody, and hey, why not like, share and subscribe if that's your thing. Problems, problems.